Good morning, everybody. Um, I'd first like to start by thanking the Citizens' Assembly for inviting the Irish Organic Association to speak to you today. It's really great to see this deliberative process, and we've been a big supporters of it, making a submission and everything, which I'm sure you've had an opportunity to look at. Um, I'm a, a policy advisor with the Irish Organic Association. It's a non-profit um, in place for about 40 years, certifying organic um, food and farming businesses across the country across the island, and also trying to develop the sector on behalf of our members. I'm also an organic farmer myself. Um, we do beef and tillage in County Leash, um, along with my brother and my father. So today, I'm going to look at organic farming from the perspective of our farm and where we're looking at biodiversity management. So maybe to start first is, what is organic farming all about? Well, organic farming is based on, um, it's guided by four principles looking at the health, the health of the ecosystem, ecology, how we work with uh, natural cycles and uh, work with the landscape that we have, uh, fairness in terms of animal welfare, but also fairness across the supply chain, and then care. So we want to optimize our productivity, but we don't want to do that um, as most farmers. Um, we don't want to, no farmer wants to harm the uh, environment. So we're looking at those uh, four principles they inform how the organic standards work and then thus defined in EU law. So moving to our farm and to illustrate that, uh, we converted to organic farming um, about a year and a half ago um, and we're looking at organic uh, biodiversity in, in different aspects. First of all, uh, in the field, we're looking at biodiversity both above and below the ground. Um, so on the beef side, uh, we're not using uh, synthetic fertilizers. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, have uh, breeds of animals that work well in a grassland system. In some cases, we're incorporating clover. We're also trying to improve the um, diversity of the, uh, of the grassland through, in some cases, planting multi-species swords, but only where that's appropriate with the land that we have. Then on the, on the tillage side, this is the new enterprise for us. We've gone into organic tillage, and here, um, a big focus is on crop rotation. So we're trying to build fertility with clover and then change the sequence of the crop so we don't have um, pest and disease burden. Um, but at the same time, we, we can tolerate a certain amount of arable weeds which are positive for biodiversity in terms of pollination once we can sort of strike that balance between getting a good production and allowing nature to work for us. And at the same time, I really want to stress the point about above and below the ground. So we all see biodiversity very clearly above the ground, but also it's about below the ground. And we're really looking at soil biodiversity. Soil biodiversity is, is a key for us. Soil is what feeds the crop, but it's also a foundation for biodiversity itself. So we're looking at how we recycle organic manures to build soil structure, um, improve the organic matter and soil life overall. Then in the second area, we're also looking at biodiversity across the landscape. So it's not just in the field, it's looking at around the field, all across the farm. So on our farm, uh, we're looking at uh, hedgerow and tree line management. That's ongoing maintenance in that. We're ensuring that uh, grass burges are allowed to overgrow to a certain extent. Um, we have uh, developed a, a, wood, a, a native woodland and pond area in the, in the mid-90s, that also involves um, ongoing maintenance. And at the same time, we're trying to go that bit further as well, trying to enhance. So you see there we have some um, uh, hedgerow uh, planting. And sometimes we use agri-environmental schemes, and sometimes we do it on our own bat. It really depends what, uh, what works uh, for us and the incentives there. So that sort of gives you a, a sort of a whistle-stop tour in terms of how we're looking at biodiversity on our farm. In terms of uh, the su uh, successes and the challenges, a big success for us is we made a commercial decision to convert to organic farming. But at the same time, it's been very complementary to our biodiversity management, particularly in the field. And at the same time, you have to remember is that all farmers, when they want to work and manage biodiversity, they have to strike a balance between production and biodiversity management. And that, that is a cost. It's a cost sometimes that's hidden because it's not necessarily reflected in the price that we get for our produce, even in a case where we may get a, a higher premium for organic produce. That's not, the, the work that's done in biodiversity isn't necessarily reflected in that. And therefore, policy incentives are, are, are really uh, important. 
And the concept of public money for public goods is really an important part of that. Um, and it's been very positive with the new cap in terms of new changes, in terms of environmental schemes, a new focus on organic farming, etc. This is very, very positive. But organic farmers also want to go further. And it's, it's important that when farmers want to go further, they're appropriately paid for that. So we have, we have concerns, for example, where we see that um, uh, schemes where we could go further, we may not have the opportunity to take. So in conclusion, what I would say is that organic farmers um, can la offer a lot for biodiversity. But in, for all farmers, when we want to go that extra mile, it's important that we're encouraged and rewarded appropriately. Thanks very much. Thank